of stress, if you have anxiety, if you have tension or you're dealing with trauma, hang in here. We're going to be talking about it and giving practical solutions. Um, the best thing that you can do is click through this and watch this live. Looking forward to it. Today is a 29 degree in Scorpio. It's going to be a powerful day. Today's a day where you're going to feel what your heart wants and you're going to be tested on all the stuff that's been going on this last month. So today is a perfection day. It's an embodiment day. Wave, wave, wave. Put in where you're from. Guys, give me a bunch of likes and hit down here um, and send this out to a few friends, 10 friends, 20 friends, whatever. Just send it out and let's see what we can do with this algorithm here. <clears throat> Thank you for helping out. Does it still say, Denise? So thank you. Come on in and wave in, wave in. Give me a bunch of uh, likes. Hit, hit a bunch of likes and also hit this this button right there and send it out to 10 or 15 friends. <clears throat> okay, perfect. I've only got 27 people on there. Hit it down here, send it out to a bunch of friends. Let's see if we can build this up. You guys, we're testing the algorithms here. We <clears throat> are definitely getting some weird stuff. Definitely getting some weird stuff. I feel like sitting today. Okay, please help out. So if you're in there in the chats, it's not going to anybody right now. Can you please help out? And send it to whoever. I actually feel like sitting. Weird. <clears throat> So yeah, hit the lights down here. Hi, Sony. Yeah, it's like doing some weird stuff. I'm only at 55 right now. <clears throat> Let's see if Sophia's around. Okay, one second, guys. Hey, from North Bay. Guys, uh, this is uh, really super weird. Thank you for all being patient and helping out with this. Um, <clears throat> give me a bunch of likes and hit the hit the share button and share it with uh, some people on your list. <clears throat> Even if they're not there, I just want to see what happens. Now, I don't, I don't think we're specific. I mean, I think the whole industry is being censored, but... <clears throat> Wow, this is really weird. No request to go live. No notification this time. <clears throat> Nobody got notified. Okay. <clears throat> we don't count down on Toro Toyans. Unable to join. Hey, so if we, uh, are you? You out there? <clears throat> Somebody who has, has a bigger profile, if you've got like a hundred thousand plus or whatever, if you've got that many on your live and you want to come live, let's test something out. Thanks for helping me out, guys. We're, uh, I got notified. Some people got notified. No notification. Wow. This is uh, super weird. I didn't get notified either, just by chance. <clears throat> Comments stop scrolling. Thank you guys. I can share it. So keep sharing it down there. Let's see what happens. Thanks guys. I think uh, I think we'll use the beginning of this session today to figure out what's going on with the algorithm here. Yes. And if you guys notice anything weird, so if you got notified, let me know. It looks like people are joining now. <clears throat> If people are joining because they know it's there, if you're if you're just joining, did you get notified? No notification. Okay, Mark Lou, no notification. Huh? That's super weird. I'll be back in a few minutes. Okay. Yes, I was notified. Huh? If anybody here currently has like. 100,000, 200,000 on your account and you're in here, can you let me know? 
what you're and uh, and let's let's go live and see if we can bring the uh, change the algorithm. <clears throat> no notification, but it was up from the story. I got I had a notification. Hey, Jasmine, how are you doing over there in UK? Because my video ended, ended your live one. It wasn't wasn't it mentioned after Monday this would be a weird day? Yeah, it was. It was. I'm just seeing how weird it was. Seems like it was delayed. <clears throat> Bite down energy. I love that. <laughs> yeah. We're just figuring it out, guys. I mean, listen, we have so much organic reach that it doesn't matter. It, even if they were, you know, people know our times and they come on. So the difference between somebody coming on now or coming on in 15 or 20 minutes is they know it's that time anyways. We have settings on on our own page, which I'll say notifications. So I'm getting notifications. <clears throat> yeah, it was, these are all people that normally get it. I think uh, last Tuesday this happened as well. Oh, you're right. It did, didn't it? Yeah, it was last Tuesday. Last Tuesday we had an issue, right? <clears throat> and Jason had an issue here today too. Like when Jason was on live. Hey, Neelam. Neelam D joined. I got a no notification. Okay. Well, let's talk. Okay. Okay. We've done what we can. Let's just uh, let's just open up and start having our conversation. We met in Joshua, Jasmine, oh six one one. Hey, how are you doing? Yeah. PST, you weren't here, so I just randomly came back. <clears throat> hmm. That's interesting. ADM, PST. Huh. I've not been getting them for a while. Okay. Yeah, I wonder what's going on. I just tried to bring somebody up. It didn't work. So, okay, let's deal with who's dealing with what today. Today is an interesting day. Today's a weird day. Today's the day you're going to be tested on all the stuff that's been going on this month. It is a weird day by all stretch of the imagination. We had some pretty crazy stuff happening here at the retreat. So if you have something you want to talk about, what are your tours... Oh, hot tubs with chlorine. Uh, chlorine is not good for you. Um, but you can convert them over to salt water. It's so easy. <clears throat> I see 29th swollen lymph node, right side of neck. That's maneuver. Swollen lymph node, right side of neck. Okay, so here you just pin your neck like this. So you see I pinned the fascia there. I'm pushing it up like this. Stretching and then squatting and moving. And that will open up. <clears throat> but I would do the whole, whole upper right reset, go do the upper reset. So if you got a lymph node swollen, it's mean you've got some congestion up here and probably down here. Last day of Scorpio, more test. I'm not sure I can handle it. Yeah, you're right. <clears throat> Michelle, let's talk to you. Uh, chlorine, I, uh, it's not good. I mean, there's a lot of things it'll do. Uh, it set, offsets your pH balance. It's a poison, it's a toxin. <clears throat> if you take your hands, uh, there's this uh, chlorine test you can see going around the internet. What they do is they take tap water, they put the chlorine dye in, so it shows you it goes yellow with this chlorine. So they put two glasses of tap water, they put the dye in one, then they put your hand in the other. While that one's going yellow, they take your hand out, put the dye in the second one, there, it doesn't go yellow. And the reason why <clears throat> is because the uh, the Chlorine itself uh, is absorbed right into the body. They were telling you that, you know, like there's this myth that, this is why I say, if you're not going to eat it, don't put it on your skin. <clears throat> yes. Thanks, Lynn. Maging backwards, I'm about to go through a big transition. I've been going through one the last couple of days. My mouth and jaw, everything's been moving. Welcome from Port Moody. I try to get you up here, <clears throat> Mish. Tell me what you do for vertigo. <clears throat> go to um, go to the uh, if you can't find it, you can go to uh, you send us a DM. Do Jason's head and neck class with the eye movements, and that should get rid of your vertigo. If it doesn't, uh, if you're not if you're not taking diatomaceous earth, Irish sea moss, you're going to need to. That can really make a difference. Alexandra, I can't even make you. Uh, can't even bring you up. What to do for dyslexia? Not sleeping well. Not sure. Part of a deviated septum. Wow, man, this is a weird day. 
My son of two always plays with the tap water and drinks it. <clears throat> yes, stop drinking that tap water. <clears throat> and and Arnold, want to hear about your experience? Yeah, I've been feeling. I've been. Uh, we had a early class. Hi, Anne. Hi. Oh, we came through. You're there. Hi. How are you? Good. And where where are you from? San Juan Capistrano, California. Whoa. <laughs> San Juan Capistrano. I spent some time out there. Yes, I know. How are you? Good. So, uh, Anne, when is your birthday again? Today. Hey. You're a 29 degree Scorpio. Well, I don't know. I don't know. I'd always said yeah, that. Yeah, today, if today's your birthday, today. you're a 29 degree. You gotta message me. I got a group of people like you. I would love that. Yeah. Well, that I mean, that's no accident that I randomly bring you up today. Well, I said it was my birthday on the the chat because I was excited to to thank you. I mean, the resets have been awesome. So this is your third time you're doing it? Uh-huh. I've done them back to back. My husband just started his first, which I never thought he would do, but he's halfway through. So it's awesome. It's great. So you're going to join the Lifestyle Artist Program now? I'm trying to, but, but it's all filled. I tried to get a, oh. an appointment and there's well, none uh, available. Just, just message us. Say you're trying to get a spot for the Lifestyle Artist Program. I mean, we're getting, we can take more people, but we haven't set up. It's these queuing systems. So just message us saying you're trying to, Register for the Lifestyle Artist. Here's your email address. You can't get an appointment. Okay. I did. It asked me to send it an email. <clears throat> it, so. Okay. Cool. And then and also send another message. Go and uh, go uh, to astro.com. Okay. Print, okay. Your, print your, your astro chart. Take a screenshot and send it. Say, this is for Gary. And then I'm going to send you back a link to get into a 29 group. Okay. Well, when I do that chart, that always tells me I'm 28. I know nothing about astrology. But if today's your birthday, today is your birthday, right now. It, today is my birthday, the twenty-first. Okay, and, and what time is your birthday? What time you're born? Six fifty-seven in the morning. It doesn't feel it. Like, are you sure that's the right time? That, that's what it. I don't. I how how sure can I be? That's the time it says on my on my birth certificate. Okay. I don't feel like that's the right time. Good. I've never felt it was the right time. <laughs> yeah. So let me tune in for you. Can I tune in to you? Yes, I'd love that. Okay. Try 7.23 a.m. That feels better. Feels better. And you're a Scorpio, you know. <laughs> yes, I do know. Yeah, so you can't lie to you. So what do you, as a, as a Grandmaster Scorpio, what do you do when people lie to you? Do you tell them? I instantly know. Um, Glad you're not my mom. <laughs> That's a good thing my sons aren't on here. Um, let's see. Yeah. I I usually just accept it and don't say much. It depends who it is, but I know. Yeah. And yeah. um and when, when your husband when's his birthday? Um April twenty fifth. Oh, he's a Taurus. Uh -huh. uh? Right. So you both can be stubborn. <laughs> oh yeah probably yeah <clears throat> so <clears throat> yeah you don't tell him because because you because you you don't say because you care and he doesn't say because he wants to make sure he has all the information before he says <laughs> is that how it works yeah okay Isn't, well doesn't that sound right um i would say 
Yes, and. Um, I think he often doesn't say because there's a lot of fear that lives in his life. Fear of what? A lot, there's just a lot of fear that lives in his life. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm, where is that from upbringing? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Like, uh, was he born here in, in the United States? Uh huh. Uh -huh. So I just don't, so what, what, I don't want to speak for him. He just has had a lot of things in his life, but so have I. So um, maybe we're a good fit because well, we, we well, both. As a, as a Grandmaster Scorpio, you would have had excessive amount of boundary issues between zero and 30. People testing your boundaries all over the place. Yeah. Extreme. Yes. Am, am I, so how did that reaction? Up with and my reaction was, of course, I, you carry it in your body, right? So yeah. my my joints and my body started falling apart as a teenager. So yeah. yeah. So how are you now? Um, I th think I'm really good. I mean, I I can still hurt. I still um, so throughout my whole life, I've had a lot of chronic pain and a lot of um, bones that don't that I sublex out of all my joints, and so um, in the last couple decades i've had a lot of spontaneous fractures but i'm good now i feel really good the fascia maneuvers have been great i watched them and i felt like my body craved it like i already experienced it before i ever have, did it have you been taking the diatomaceous earth irish months you bet yeah your bones are going to get stronger the other one you can add if you haven't done it is boron okay yeah, that that is. I mean, it's main out main one of the main things it does is strengthens up your bones. Okay, <clears throat> that's what I want. Yeah, and you can get, get that boric acid is a good good source of it. Okay, I can't believe I'm talking to you. This is so cool. It's like you and I talking, and I know there's all these other people, but thank well, I, you. Yeah, I didn't I didn't see it was your birthday. I just said you're doing it the second or third time, and I'm like, I want to talk to you. So what what are some of your bigger takeaways? Because it's your third time. Uh, um, I didn't feel as much my first time, um, but I did it. Like I was doing it. I love the maneuvers. Um, and then the second time I noticed, I noticed, what did I notice? I noticed that I was, I was paying attention differently. Like through it all, I craved the maneuvers. I was slow to add the supplements because I always want to make sure, yeah. you know, what what is making the changes. And then, but I think my takeaway is just more optimism, um, sometimes a bit more turmoil, like I'm aware I'm, I'm shifting, I'm changing. Um, there are times I can be in a lot of pain from a maneuver, like after the fact in a different place. Yeah. And I go but I always know I'll figure it out um, and I'll just keep adjusting and moving until it settles. Uh, um, I don't know. It's like, it's, it's a bigger picture than one thing. That's what I've noticed. Just, just the ease. There's more ease. How's that? There's more ease in my life. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a really, really good description because, you know, people are looking for a magic bullet and a cure. And what the magic bullet and the cure is, is really take the body out of stress and have more ease. Yeah. Yeah. See, and that's what I noticed. And that's what I think I've always been looking for. Like, literally, they told me I would be in a wheelchair by 24. They told me I could never have children. They thought I had juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. They told me they'd be fusing my joints. I didn't do any of that, but I always was felt like I was living on borrowed time. But I just kept figuring it out and doing more what i wanted so today i'm 69 so 69. i'm not in nine i'm 69 wow. yeah this i'm not your, in a wheelchair this is your take action year by the way oh is it oh <laughs> good i need take action last year was all you're all in your head yes Just last year and this year you're going to be taking action on stuff you're going to be literally <clears throat> acting all year long on things on what you've learned bringing stuff into reality. And you're 69, my gosh. You I, am don't look 69. I am 69, yes. No work, no nothing. It's just me. <laughs> wow, you, you look fantastic for 69. Oh, thank you. My father is 101, so I, <laughs> I, I might be around for a long time. <laughs>
Well, I think uh, actually, I think the whole age thing is a bunch of crap. I, you know, this, that's what I'm. I'm here to prove it. That's what we're doing. Our whole team and in our community is just proving that that you get younger. Like I'm, I'm legitimately getting younger. Like I, I have better energy and more ability to move and do stuff than when I was like 17 or 18. Well, so do I. I mean, I was thinking I was going to be in a wheelchair and I hurt so bad and all my joints felt, my hip would sublax, my arms would sublax, everything was painful. So um, I didn't, I didn't move. I didn't have muscle. I just slowly dwindled, but I still knew I wanted, I was determined to still do things in my life. So. so have you noticed that everything happens for you at the last minute? Yes. And it always Absolutely. works out. Huh? It always works out but you stress about yes. it or you used to anyway stress about it until the last minute yes. now you're probably and when it works it's great but oh the, <clears throat> everything getting to that is painful yes absolutely yeah that's that's the mark of a 29 degree <gasps> okay so the the journey for you is to learn how to just know that it's going to work out and not have all the emotions and the reactions between now and the time it works out so okay what i here here's you're talking <clears throat> Here's a 29 to a 29. Yeah, trusting. you're talking about you have to trust. Well, that doesn't come easy. <clears throat> well, you're a 29 degree Scorpio. You're designed to protect. Oh, uh, is that? that is? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's like trusting is, you know, protection is important, but protection means that I have to protect against something. So your journey is to learn that there's nothing to protect against. Okay. I like that. Yeah, but it takes a lot. Somebody asked about your human design. Do you know that by any chance? I, I know a little bit. I'm a manifesting for I'm, gen- I'm a manifester. Yeah, okay, manifester. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. So you're a manifester. That's interesting. I'm a generator. Oh. I can see being a manifester. That's very true. I don't know a lot about it, just a little bit that somebody in this last year told me about it. So I know that I always have ideas. I can, but I, but I can then be done. Like I get tired. So, but I love to be creative. I love things seem to always come to me. And then I worry when things stop coming to me. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I get that. I get that. Yeah. So what are you doing for your birthday today? I'm actually working. I have to go teach. So what do you yeah. teach? I teach a bunch of grad students how to be therapists, family therapists. Oh, family therapists. Yes. You would have loved our session today. Huh? Loved our session here today. I probably would. I was I was showing somebody who's on our team who's going through um, again, you know, moving out of chronic pain <laughs> issues and stuff like that. I was, I was showing her like asking for me to actually help do physical work, and I'm like, I don't think I want to do that anymore because <laughs> it's not physical anymore. So we just talked her completely out of her chronic pain. Oh. Wow. Yeah, and it took us, what a gift. It took us about 45 minutes and she went from a, a level eight to uh, to no pain at all. I love that. I love that. That's so great. Yeah. yeah. yeah I think getting... I, do, I do really well helping people move out of their pain um, more mm-hmm. than I do helping myself out of my well, pain. Well, that's changing, though. Yeah, and absolutely. You that already. I'm working on it. Yeah. I mean, I'm getting the sense that maneuvers are for life. Yeah. Right. I yeah. mean, it's, and the question is, it's not. Is what is a fascial maneuver? Well, it, to me, it just feels like um, like I'm connected to every part of what is in me and out of me. Yeah. When I yeah, so, a maneuver, yeah, I just feel like there's more. I feel the energy of it. Yeah. That that's yeah. cool. So. Imagine this, we have a, an aura. People say we have an aura. Uh-huh. Scientists call it an entropic field. Okay. <clears throat> What's something we can measure, like we had a piece of equipment in Lions Bay, mm-hmm. it's a laser, it would scan, it would blow a laser uh, shard at your finger and then it would cause an off gas and then it would rebuild your entropic field. So it'd show you everything in your field, including your chakras and where they sat in your field. Cause you could have a, you could have a heart chakra up and over here or up over here. <clears throat> and then you could do some work intentionally and move it and then test it again. It's a Russian piece of equipment, pretty expensive. It was like 50 grand or something like this for this testing machine. And, uh, and so basically we have this entropic field and that, and the human experience 
we we think that I have an aura, but that's actually not true. That's an egocentric view, because that aura is more intelligent than me. Yeah, so I don't radiate something more intelligent than I am. That intelligence is something that the cats see, animals see. We can see it with uh, with with certain machines and and certain cameras. We can see the the, the ball of energy. And in the center of that ball and energy is an avatar. It's a stubby, dense little human. Okay. So the, the basically the the energy has a human to act out its things in this world. So we're so we think that we have an aura, but the truth is the aura has a human, and mm -hmm. and it's pushing that human around, giving it cues and clues all over the place. And sometimes when it doesn't listen, it gives it a smack. <clears throat> I feel the smack a lot. Yeah, of course, mm -hmm. because you're you're looking to be in line with your mission, but that's coming into play right now. So, how do we connect with that energy? Well, the body we're seventy percent water, twenty five percent silica, sand, and five percent bacteria, viruses, parasites, stuff like that. So basically, we're water and sand. Yeah. So basically, with bacteria in it, that means that we are. The same as a quartz crystal. We are actually a fluid crystal. Mm. And so, and can you see through quartz crystals? Or are they yeah, white? They're all, they're white, or sometimes they're clear. Okay. Or they're sometimes opaque, more opaque, depending on what the constitution is. Sometimes they're very clear. Sometimes they're very white. Okay. So, when our fascia gets really congested or dehydrated, guess what? It feels crystalline. You move it, a practitioner moves it, it's like tearing, it's almost like ripping. Yeah, uh, I would let anybody work on, on me. Uh, I would do acupuncture, but not, it hurt too much. Physical therapists, chiropractor, all of them, they, it was too much pain in my life. If they yeah, so, so touched this is where me. fast maneuvers kicks yeah. in. Yeah, so I've just done it on my own. Anything I've ever done, I do on my own, on my terms, and then I, then I can trust it. So here, here's something yeah. is that if I inflict pain on your arm uh -huh. externally and I bring it up to a nine and you touch it, that pain automatically goes down to a four. Okay, yes. Because pain, you pain, that. pain is your body saying to your brain and your consciousness, hey, look over here. If you don't look, it just keeps going up. But when you acknowledge it, it drops down. And that also happens when you do this as a therapist. When you acknowledge what the pain is, mm -hmm. then the pain starts to drop. Okay. Okay. That's true emotionally as it is physically. Yeah. That's kind of cool. So we have this energy around us, and you know what they put inside your cell phone so that they can get to the tower? A crystal. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, you use a crystal on your phone, a quartz crystal, and that crystal allows you to amplify signal. So, okay. So when our fascia is working, it's crystalline. So it operates with our field really well. When the fascia is plugged up, blocked up through dehydration, heavy metals, stress, anxiety, contraction, then it's hard for the signal to get the proper interaction with the field. Okay. So when you do so, all your that fascial is. maneuvers, it feels like, well, this feels right somehow. It always you're feels up your that's right. Yeah, yeah when it started, it hurt. Like it hurt yeah. a lot. Like just, it hurt, but I, it felt like it was right. So it didn't bother me that I hurt. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, because yeah, it's, it's a good hurt. It, it was It was a good, well, I have a pretty unstable sacrum. So, and it, it, it was, and it would lock in my muscles or whatever. Fascia would get so tight that then things would be locked in the wrong way. You have a, and then it would take a lot to move it. A, and now it feels like bone? everything moves. What? Do you have a protruding bone? on your tailbone no it now it goes i have had at times now it's more underneath inward yes okay so that's and that's where the partner maneuvers with your husband's going to help okay the partner belly button uh trauma release i know I've and the part seen the video but i yeah I, i'm hoping he comes along <laughs> yeah yeah so as he's he getting along, there yeah and, or if you can get somebody else practicing in your area or you can get together with somebody, you can do that. That's most likely going to let that tailbone go from inward to outward. Okay. Okay. Because that tailbone goes right back the way it works. Is that was your umbilical cord connection. 
and that went right into the, the lower spine and then went up the spine to the brain. When the body, when the fetus is growing in the womb, there's like two clusters that formed with a, with a line in between them, like a, 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 a hose in between them. One of those right. clusters became the small intestine. The other cluster became the brain. Mm -hmm. So that, that's your intrinsic nervous system. And then from the umbilical cord, it would flow right from the umbilicus right up into the spine, into the brain. That's what's that. Okay. So that, that connection, when we cut this, when we cut it, that connection inside didn't go away. It just got shriveled up and twisted around. So when you do a belly button on torque like this, uh -huh. like this, it works. So just holding. Okay. You try it with me? Come on. Sure. sure. I'm game. I'll do it. There you go. Okay. Okay. So what you're going to do is take your right hand and you're going to put it in. So you see, I'm turning it upside down. Okay. Put it inside my belly button. Mm -hmm. and turn it thumbs up okay. okay take your left hand put it on the back around that area and turn it to the left opposite feel that contraction now oh yeah and okay, now squeeze your spinal pelvic block and then move around and breathe a little slower fascia likes that slow movement Bend over, all the way over. Repeat after me. I'm detaching from my mother's emotions. Oh, I'm detaching from my mother's emotions. I'm bringing all of my emotions back to me. I'm bringing all my emotions back to me. Okay. And up. Feel that around, let it go. Mm -hmm. wow. your, your heart, didn't it? Yeah, it did. What All are you I feeling? could think of was um, thank you. What a great birthday gift. <laughs> um, yes. <clears throat> yeah, sit in that emotion. What are you feeling? Um, I don't usually, I have sometimes a hard time holding, keeping my emotions, whether you want to use the word boundaries or even getting them so lost, I don't know myself. Like that's always been my journey in my life. And so I can connect to other people. I can carry them. I can carry harmful people, <clears throat> but it, it destroys me. Yeah. And so having you come back to me just felt like okay. a Okay, and so grab grab the skin right here. Yeah. Pull it apart as hard as you can. And then push up and through it. And go side to side and move around and breathe. I'm opening up my heart. I'm opening up my heart. I no longer need to protect my heart. I no longer need to protect my heart. I'm opening up to new experiences. I'm opening up to new experiences. There, there it is. <clears throat> How's that feel? It feels possible. Yeah. If I if there's a feeling of possibility, that's it. Like it's what I desire. It's what I've wanted. I always want new things, but they don't seem possible. And right there, it felt possible. Okay, cool. So let's go to the secret weapon for Scorpio. Oh yes. We got we got another Scorpio here. One of our one of our coaches from from uh, from uh, what do you call it from uh, Minnesota here. Okay. She she was just so. Uh, changing her life she decided she, i'm gonna shave my head just to okay. okay so let's go to the center bone here okay and then move your body your move your uh, down to the right side that's the liver okay push in there deep and then turn your hand upwards so you get a good torque okay left hand on your neck okay breathe in with me 
Clear your mouth. Two. Three. Say thank you, anger and resentment. Thank you, anger and resentment. I no longer need you in my body. I no longer need you in my body. To take action. To take action. Breathe in through your nose. Two. Three. <clears throat> cool. So what, what changed for you there? Oh, my heart started racing. Mm -hmm. Really pounding. Like I'm super, super excited. Yeah. Ah. Like, like I want that freedom. Yeah. I want all of that. Yeah. 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 So thank you. <laughs> okay, we're not quite done yet. Oh, okay. Right hand okay. on the heart. Uh -huh. Left hand on, on the throat. Breathe in. As you imagine, imagine green and blue colors playing here. Breathe in again. Again. I'm ready to speak my truth. I'm ready to speak my truth. Even when it's inconvenient for others. Even when it's inconvenient for others. Breathe in through your nose. Two. Three. I'm ready to speak what's on my heart. I'm ready to speak what's on my heart. <clears throat> wow. It just feels, um, that felt like it will be now easy. Mm -hmm. but, so for me, speaking used to be really hard at all. I was a selective mute till I was probably about 20. It is I stopped talking. And then when I tried to talk, it was all hard. And then as I, you know, obviously I'm this therapist, I'm an educator, I teach. I could talk, but I couldn't talk about me. Right. And then I learned to talk about me and it's been hard. And sometimes it takes me a long time, but it's been an intentional thing to finally scream or talk or have my words and you just now it feels like i don't have to work so hard it will be easy okay one last one <laughs> hand on your heart. left hand on your head. okay breathe in through your mouth two three Thank you, body, for holding all the all of this trauma. Thank you, body, for holding all of this trauma. Heart, you're in charge now. Heart, you're in charge now. Breathe in through your nose. Two. Three. Thank you, brain, for protecting me. Thank you, Brain, for protecting I me. No longer need narratives to protect me. I no longer need narratives to protect me. Breathe into your mouth, into your heart. Two. Three. Through your nose. Two. Three. <clears throat> Gosh, my heart is just racing. Do you always use the word narrative? Like, well, I, I could use another word. Is there another one? Word yeah. Because um, I'm a narrative therapist. That's what uh, I'm known as, and that's what I'm. You're a perceptionist. <clears throat> uh, I just 
know that the stories live us. You're a perceptionist. And is that what it well, is? If I change my perception, I change my narrative. If I change my narrative, the world has to show up differently. Yes. <clears throat> and if you have a different narrative, you just start living different. A bit so yeah. Of science for you. Okay. When you, if if I'm important to you, and I put a EEG on your head, and I speak, your reticular activating lobe region of the brain will light up about fifty percent. Okay. You can see it, it'll go red. But when you speak, it lights up 100%. Oh. Because your brain, your reticular activating system, its job is to prove what you say to be true. Mm. So if, if I was to say to you that your husband died and you believe me, I got a text message here, sorry, and your husband died. Your whole body goes into shock. Yeah. Your body starts firing adrenaline, norepinephrine, cortisol, testosterone. It goes crazy. And then all your systems in your body are compromised. Your breathing, your digestion, your immunity, your, <clears throat> your lymphatic system, everything is compromised. Then I say to you 10 minutes later, oh, it wasn't your husband. It was somebody else. And you believe me. <clears throat> You're, oh, thank God. I, th I was so scared there. Yeah. Now your body perceptually comes out of shock. It takes four to six hours for those chemicals to abate your blood, to leave. And, and your body starts healing or coming out of that. But the only thing that changed was a perception, a narrative. Okay. So that means that narrative or perception is the highest state of awareness in the human biologic fluid adaptive biological computing system. So narrative drives all other function in the body. So why isn't that when we go to a medical doctor, we don't talk about our narrative? Well, I don't go to doctors unless they're willing to listen to my narrative. So, yes. <laughs> That's you. You're, 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 a, you're a narrative. narrative. You're a narrative expert. I am. If they, if they won't, then I get quiet and I leave and I never go back. Yeah, I do that too. <laughs> Actually, I, well, I just don't go to doctors. Yeah, I, I try not to. Well, at the, and that's that's the beauty about doing what I do is that I would, you know, I've I've been able to work myself through. There's not there's not a function in the body that that scares me, and every function in the body has a reason, and that reason can't be fixed by somebody else. And if they do fix it, it's just going to come back somewhere else. So I have a question for you. Okay. What? Tell me about blood. Tell <clears throat> me about like blood and fascia. Where I've never heard you talk about blood. Not mind you, I'm just, you know, yeah, yeah. only know so, any so blood. So what is yes. let's define what blood is. Okay, in your car, you have a radiator and it keeps your car cool when it's hot and hot mm -hmm. when it's cold. Mm -hmm. So your blood is your radiator fluid. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so it it balances between all the functions in the body so that things can stay. And pretty much your pH in your blood which is hydrogen, we, we are hydrogen producing machines. We produce hydrogen. So your pH is potential hydrogen, right. 14. Your blood has a narrow range of 0.2%. And if it goes out of that range, you're sick or dead. Right. Really fast. So your blood is bringing all of the life and the oxygen to all of the tissues and organs and limbs and everything else in your body. <clears throat> and your blood has to be constant, so it will do anything. Your body will do anything to make sure that blood's constant. Like, for example, if you don't have enough calcium, if you're not processing or digesting, your, your body, your blood will steal the calcium from the bones so that you have enough in your body. And then 15 to 20 years later, you got osteopenia, osteoporosis. Or right. for you, <clears throat> when you're young. So that's okay. a pH issue. Okay. So that's probably been my whole journey with my bones but now i have a weird gamopathy in my in my bone or in my blood but they just watch it i should they tell me i should have multiple myeloma but i don't have cancer i don't have oh, multiple they myeloma. Watch it? Did, they, did they put a camera <laughs> put it up watch the whole movie or no they just when well, they take my blood now it's just once a year and it's there it's <clears> okay so Here's a way to look at it. There's different yeah. ways to look at the body. Yeah. Blood is always going to, the body's going to work to make sure the blood's okay. Okay. So it's a really, 
pretty bad place to look because by the time there's a problem in your blood, you're sick or dead. Right. So, but there's a lot of things that happen before you get to the blood. Like if I'm not absorbing my food and I can't absorb calcium, then eventually my my blood is not going to show it for a long time because my blood's going to get the calcium from the bones. Okay. And then one day I'm going to find out I got a problem with my calcium or my bones. Right. So, so that, so there's other ways, subclinical tests, Genova Labs is one of them. There's a bunch of different, that'll test urine and saliva and they'll say, how hard is your kidney working? How hard is your liver working? Right. Um, what's your digestion? What's your, is your body catabolic or anabolic? These are measurements. So your blood, think about your blood being a, uh, on a car, a speed. So they say you're going 60, I'm going 60, everybody else is going 60. That's one measurement, right? But it doesn't tell me how hard my engine's working to make that 60. So what if your engine is at 3,000 RPM, but mine's at 9,000 RPM? Well, we're going to remeasure the speed where it's all going to look the same for right now, but it's not going to be too long until my 9,000 RPM is going to blow my engine. <laughs> this is why blood is an ineffective way. I'll say this. I'm going to get shit on, I know. This is why blood is an ineffective way to determine health. It can determine how close you are to sickness or death. Right. An allopathic diagnosis can only tell you how close you are to sickness. Name, okay. Tell me a diagnosis in medicine that tells you how healthy you are. Oh, you're healthy. We don't have one. No. Except they keep, they've all my life said, you are, because based on la basic common lab work, I look very healthy yeah but, but what then is, I kept, what is healthy but then I, well exactly it didn't change that i was in pain and it didn't change that i had but, fractures but healthy is healthy is that i mean what are they saying you have pain and fractures that's not healthy no but on but in those tests right what they're measuring it was so maybe they're not like, maybe they're measuring the wrong things or not enough things yeah I mean, so here's, I, here's, I, I, one, here's how I determined okay. health. Okay. okay. First and foremost, the very first measurement of health is your hydration. And I, and I would bet that I've been incredibly dehydrated because I'm slowly noticing that change. Yes. So a couple months you're in You're taking now. the supplements yes. now. And the, but and I'm our sure that I was terribly, terribly dehydrated. Yeah. And our supplements... Um, are not supposed to do like they're not like a vitamin where we're saying you're missing something we're giving you something that's not how the body works the body is a reactive species so if i give you something that you're missing then it takes away the reason why you're missing it i don't find that out till later so if you're missing vitamin c and you take vitamin c and you keep missing vitamin c and you keep taking more eventually the reason why you're missing vitamin c is going to blow up somewhere 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. Right. So what we're doing is we, you take diatomaceous earth, that mm -hmm. is an element of silica, which allows you to absorb minerals. Now, when you, now that helps, we're made of silica, so that's our connective tissue. That's the building blocks for our connective tissue, which mm -hmm. is everything, we're all connective tissue. Mm -hmm. So then I can absorb minerals. Now the minerals help me hold water but the minerals are, each one of those 102 minerals is like a little pathway. It's like a little signal in a cloud telling you where to go, like in your, in your iCloud, where you got data stored over here, phones over there, passwords over there. They all have little signal pathways to different parts, different servers. That's what all those minerals are. And when I have the minerals in, now I can absorb water and my signaling is back. Now my signaling is it turns on and off hormones because if I have ineffective signaling, I'll get the wrong hormones turned on. Okay. So that's, that's, that why, was, that's yeah. why we give chemicals in our food that mimic things like calcium. Mm -hmm. we, put, we put chemicals, like my body craves calcium. I'll use a bad example, but my body goes, I want cheese. Because I've eaten Cheetos, it mm -hmm. goes back to the Cheetos thinking it's getting the cheese. Mm -hmm. Again, that it's not the greatest example, but it it's a flow. It's the idea, and so so my so my brain my I eat it. My body goes, oh, thanks for all the cheese. I got it. I got all the calcium I need. And then it starts to digest and process. And it goes, hey, guy down here goes, hey, I thought you said you gave me cheese. I sent an order for cheese. You didn't get it. Oh yeah, I got it. Well, I'm not enough. So I go. 
it becomes that's how they bias it back into good. There you are. <laughs> so your blood is is a measurement, but it's not a measurement of health. It's something to measure against. I'm not against blood measurement. And your blood will tell you, like if your blood cells, like a live blood analysis, mm -hmm. is a better way of looking at blood because it tells you closer to what's going on. Like it tells you mm -hmm. the cells are healthy or not, or reproducing or stagnant. So live blood analysis is better than normal blood, but it's still not telling you because your blood itself is just an indicator of what's going on. You got to get in and it's like, like if I'm not absorbing nutrients, if I'm not digesting, processing, and absorbing nutrients, then it all goes off. Mm -hmm. So then we got to measure digestion and absorption. Yep. So what we're doing yeah. in the 20 reset is we're giving you hydration, uh, silica, diatomaceous earth, and then a power curve 30, which is a secret weapon. It's actually pharmacology delivered in a natural source. So we get to sell it as a supplement. <laughs> so, so what it does is it reduces cellular inflammation so your body can function better while it's trying to heal itself. Because inflammation is stress on the body and stops us from healing itself. I didn't notice that it was helpful at first, but I think it's been cumulatively, like over time. Now I'm like, everything seems dialed down. So take, I mean, go take six of them. Go what? Take six of them at once. I do. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, you were coming from a big deficit because you had a bone issue, which is a blood issue, which is an absorption issue. Yes. You've been your whole life, so yeah. I, I came from probably more deficits, but they kept telling me I was healthy, but it didn't change. Like the last break was my T11, like no injury, like to just have your T11, you know, rupture. Um, and yet for me, even when I've done those things, I don't, I'm so accustomed to pain. I didn't see doctors and somehow my body would just cast it. Yeah. And then maybe three or four months later, they would finally say, you need to have, you know, an MRI and they'd go, oh my gosh, it's all shattered. But I would heal. I've been very fortunate. That, yeah. there, there's yeah. a good one. It's shattered. So if bones were structure, which we don't believe they're structure, yeah. then how could that shattered bone, how can you stand and walk if it's shattered? Yeah. It totally shattered. Yeah. It hurt like hell. Here's, oh, here's one that's funny is none of the bones in the body touch except for the rib cage, the teeth, and the ears. So how yeah. can bones be structured? I don't know. I'm just happy that I don't hurt as much. So I'll just, that makes it all worth it. Yeah. yeah. You're, you're on the right track. I mean, listen, you've got to, you're working yourself through a journey here, but I'm spending the time talking to you because well, number one, because I, I already know that your journey in this world to help people is just starting. Mm -hmm. Nine, eight, eight months from now, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Okay. I'll know what in eight months? You'll know what your, you'll have a better idea what your journey is, but you're just starting to know to help people. Like you have, well, everything you've done up to this point is training ground. Ooh. I like that. I want something new. Yeah. That sounds very cool. I had no idea you'd spend this time with me. I mean, I almost feel, I feel guilty and so excited at the same time because I know other people don't get this opportunity, but like, it's my birthday and I am so jazzed. So <laughs> thank you. And thank you so, to everybody who's been so patient, so wonderful. No, we're, and we're, having a, we're having a really important conversation because you're asking good questions. And these are the questions that everybody wants to know in, in smaller degrees, right? Oh, I love that. I'm glad I'm helpful. But it, to me, it just feels so, so selfish and so good all at once. That's your Scorpio nature. <laughs> Is it? Okay, I'm glad I'm true to myself. <laughs> so, so, and uh, so that's... That's a good segue. So do me a favor. Yes. Who would the astro use that new time? Okay. I will use that new time. That time feels much and better. Then, the other I always knew was wrong. Tell your chart, send it to me. I'm super curious. Okay. And um and then uh, how do I send it to you? I don't know how to do this. On do Instagram. Do you know how to send a message on Instagram? Yeah, I think well, I can figure that out. Yeah, just attach, <laughs> attach it, do a screenshot, attach it and send it to me. 
Okay, I will screenshot. do that. A screenshot. We will do that. Okay. You're awesome. Thank I, you so much. Thank to everybody who's been listening. You guys are all wonderful. I can't Such wait to practice. see how this affects your your practice and your teaching. You're teaching a generation of people that that um, require perception change. Yes, they do. Put it that way. Yeah. Yes, I try and take them out of one world and move them into another. But. So if I can be a part of that, that's what I want to do. That's why I work with practitioners all over the world for that. I love it. All right. I can't wait till one day I meet you and I know more and I keep soon. learning. And I guarantee you it's going to be soon. That's why we're on today. Okay. Thank you, Gary. Thank to all of you. Thank you. You're such a gift. Thank Bye, you. And Bye. Take care. <clears throat> Happy birthday. That's so awesome. Yeah, that was so cool. GG, Matty, 33. I'm sitting down today. I just feel like it. I mean, we, we've been at a workshop for six hours before this. So. Hi, Alexandra. Woke up with tightness in my upper back and shoulders. Okay, so go, go do the, you can do the upper reset. That should work. Made you cry? It's super powerful, wasn't it? Are you in Chile, Alexandra? Is that where you are? Or are you still in? Okay, I tried to bring you up. Hey, Shido. Get her into the group. I need her. There you go. Are you Barbara? Terry, what do you think about stem cell? Yeah, I mean, stem cell therapy, stem cells work really great real big proponents themselves but i want to say something about them in the third day of your fast your body produces stem cells so why wouldn't you just fast i mean that's what dr sebi s-e-b-i follow his work it's all about stem cell therapy self-generated so yeah it depends on what you're using it for i mean um if you have an acute issue you can put stem cells in right away your body's going to heal faster but if your body does it by producing stem cells through fasting and moving the fascia um and then that's a better way to do it. Tried it didn't work. Okay, hey, GG. That's okay. Um, okay. okay. Don't give up. Let's see if we can make it work today. We've been trying to get you on live for a while. Hello, hello. Please. Oh my god. Is it working? Yeah, I mean like I can't see you. Hi, how are you? Good. Okay, we've had more problems than anybody trying to get you online. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what is going on, you know, like it's been like a roller coaster, you know. I I, I guess uh, internet is also purging, you know. Yeah, so tell everybody your name and your birthday. Uh, my name is Zaida, and I'm from India, Delhi. And uh, uh, my DOB is 11th March, 1983. So you, you are 19, 11th March, 19 degree Pisces. So yeah. you're all about, you're all about spiritual stuff. You're all about your heart, what your heart wants, and you probably don't express yourself very much. No. Because, yeah. So what, what's going on? I've been releasing, uh, having crazy meltdowns lately. And, you know, like, um, and I don't know, you know, I'm having some, I mean, like, I'm having some gloomy and sad, sad feeling, you know. And I don't know how to release it, you know. I mean, like, I'm smiling, but internally I'm very, um, I don't know. It's like weird. I don't know how to clear this out you know once and for all was well, it is it a, is is it bad to have a sad feeling excuse me is it bad to have a sad feeling i mean like no i mean like it's good in a way that i'm releasing all the trauma but yeah but you know like i don't know 
Uh, you know, one thing in my experience is from dealing with a lot of people is if you're having that sad feeling and you're already doing maneuvers, right? Yeah. So, so the one thing, the sad feeling is usually just a dysregulation of the feeling. It's a perception of a feeling. Um, the uh, urine therapy is super powerful for changing an emotional state. I tried that for three days, you know, as you suggested, but then I was having this allopathic medicine, you know, due to my rectum and all. Yeah. So, so that uh, I couldn't uh, bear the taste of it, you know, due to the medication. Yeah, what, what was in your rectum? Was it a surgery? I can't remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it was like the, the, um, uh, it got closed, you know, and I have to get it uh, operated, you know, and it's like, um, 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 stitches are off. I mean, like stitches, uh, um, I'm like, were, were soluble and all, but now I'm still having this, you know, pain, you know, down there. And it's like, um, um, increasing on towards the left side, you know, where stitches were done, yeah. you know, so I'm, like, I'm not side. healed properly. So, so yeah, on the left side, you know, the, you know, the anal sphincter release that we did online. Have you seen that? Yeah. 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 I saw Did you that. get somebody to help you with that? No. No, oh, I don't have anybody around. Okay, well, there's a self version. If you DM us, we can give you the self version for that too. Um, honestly, the way I did it for myself, because I had the same problem on the left side too. I had, I didn't have surgery, but I was all caught up, all the fascia, all on the left side of my rectum. So what I did is I, uh, for me, I, I had a raw, I had a big stone that I sat on, and it oh. was about this big at the top. And what I did is I sat on it. And then, and then what I did is I, I did a totally twisted and turn and then pulled up my spinal pelvic lock and I breathed and then it, it turns, turned it and then it released. So can I try this with Costco ball? Uh, the ball, it has to be able to get through the butt cheeks. Okay. So, yeah. So, so, so for me, I was trying to do it myself. Um, uh, the other way to do it is to is to use a device like uh, uh, like a dildo, like an actual uh, sexual device, right? I, I, used a, uh, I used a clinical one and then turned it, and because I was really torqued up inside there, and and I and I, and I, put, I turned it myself. This is how I developed the the release because I started doing the release in clinic. Because, you know, chiropractic is quite often they'll do a vaginal release or an anal release. So they'll go in and adjust the coccyx bone. And my coccyx bone kept going to my left and I couldn't figure out how to, you know, I could adjust it. My chiropractors could adjust it, but it kept going. And I'm like, there's got to be a way to stop this. And so, so finally, I just, I got to move the tissue. So I tried that. It worked a little bit. But the best thing I found was literally like a, a rock that I was sitting on or something that was like, it was pointy about, about that kind of pointy at the top. I sat on it like that, squeezed my butt cheeks, turned my body like this, turned my head, pulled up my spinal pelvic block, and I could feel it torquing, and then I breathe. Okay. So do I need to twist around a bit or what, you know? Should I do a swinger along with it? Or uh, well, I mean, uh, I just uh, totally twisted because that's twisting the spine. Okay. Then that's going all the way down to the rectum and then twisting it. So try mm -hmm. that. Now that your stitches are out, you should be okay to do that. And then okay. you should feel like a, almost like a, a slight tearing sensation right around the anus. Okay. Yeah, somebody said it can't all the work, but it's, but you got, the other thing too is like, it's hard to do by yourself, like to take a ball and put it in there mm -hmm. and twist it. It's hard to do that because I, I, I've tried it myself. It just didn't get the leverage. But when I, found something to sit on where I could get it right in between my butt cheeks and turn. And it was the greatest relief I ever had because my hips were out like this and this was torqued in there. And as I released it, my hips actually went back into place. Oh, I'll try that, you know, like for sure. Yeah. I mean, I mean, people laugh about it, but it's a real, you got a real, it's a real problem. And if you don't do something about it, it affects you and it continues to affect you the rest of your life. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, also, I mean, like, uh, um, uh, he, he got this stitch on the left side, you know, why am I having pain, you know, towards the left side, you know, I mean, like, I'm still on antibiotics and, um, 
painkillers, you know? Well, the pain itself, in my experience, once you get the fascial and the tissue moving, it might itch for a bit, but the pain itself is because of the restriction of fascia, in my personal experience. Mm -hmm. Mine wasn't surgery, but I had so much torque and twisting inside. It was twisted up like this, so it felt like, like I could literally stretch the, the left side of my anus, and it was, I mean, it was, I could stretch it, like I'd put a hand in the front, hand in the back, pull it, and then I'd squat and move around. And okay. like, I know you can see me, so I'd go like this and like this and yeah. pull it and squat. That works, but it doesn't, it, it only gets the surface level. And really the deep tissue, the way I got it was sitting on something. Like, oh, here, hold on a second here. And let's see if I could do it. I think I might be able to do it here. Hold on. I'll, Hold on. I, I guess I have to see the replay, you know, because I really can't see you, you know? See that rock over there? Oh, you can't see me. So yeah, I, the replay. yeah. I'll see, I'll see you on the replay. Yeah, that'll work. Uh, oh, yeah, that works. So you get on the replay. And I just twist. And then I twist this way. And then I breathe, hold my spine up and I breathe. So that's not perfect, but that works. And that's just the rock that's sitting here. So you'll watch the replay, you can get it. Here. Yeah, so you can watch the replay, you'll get it. So so, so that, that I found a rock that just, just happened to be here that worked. Okay. You'll be, you'll We'll be walking around for looking for rocks with special points. <laughs> no, that's not the <laughs> need one. A point. So, so I need a pointed one. You, I mean, like, um, yeah, like, yeah, like the more pointed it is, the more you're going to be able to work around it and you can get your feet down. Like I said, you can use, you, there's a bunch of different ways to play around, but you're trying to get a solid point that will go right between your bum cheeks so that when you do a totally twisted, um, uh, from top to bottom, you get a torquing in around the anus. Okay, that sounds good. And uh, and you know, I'm also um, uh, curious to know my chart. You know, your what? I'm curious to know my chart. You know, I mean, like um, I I mean, like like, like I'm um, five degree Aquarius moon. So you're always thinking about your emotions and you and you yeah. detach from your emotions yeah yeah what's your um, and excuse me what's your ascendant or your rising it, it's uh sagittarius what degree um uh, i'm not aware of the degree you know yeah okay so your ego is always pushing you. so basically you're going through this experience so that you can help others. Yeah. But yeah, it's a shitty way, and, to, a shitty and, way and, to do it, but. And like, you know, my Chiron is like 23 degree Taurus, you know, and. Oh, uh, so you're always trying to, you're always thinking about making money or taking care or having resources, making sure that you have enough for you. You're really good at making stuff happen. Yeah, but, uh, um, and also like uh, Neptune is 29 degrees Sag, you know, and Pluto is 29 Libra. Okay. Okay. So you're basically, you're a master at stopping and starting things and you have a master intuition, but you always, it always happens at the last minute. Your intuition kicks in right when you need it and you stop things or start things right when you need it. But the world says you should start things, you should prepare, you should get ready, but you, you start the last second and it works out. Yeah, I'm like, I don't know, I'm lazy or what, you know, like... Um, Not lazy, I'm... you're smart. <laughs> Why go through all the work? Just do it right when you need to. Everything <laughs> happens, you start and stop things every time at the very last minute and it always works out, so don't worry about it. And, you know, um, I'm, I'm, I'm like, like um, I, uh, your video popped up in March, you know, in this year, and... Um, I was very, I'm like, I did this 28 day reset in August 
and after that you know i i am so lazy or you know you can say couch potato i am not regular i am not consistent you know to do this fms and all and i am like you know releasing all your emotions don't worry about it don't beat yourself up just try to do something a little bit every day just do one maneuver a day just do like yeah you thing one one a day like just you don't have to do a whole practice it's really about just getting yourself back and just take one that you like and do it every day okay and also you know i i mean like um, my cup is always empty but i'm always there for each uh, i'm like everybody else you know i'm like filling everyone's cup but i used to get so drained and you know like um, so lethargic you know and i don't know how to channelize my emotions and all because i can't do grounding you know i mean like uh, i don't know what to do i i don't know how to channelize my stuff how old are you i'm 40 oh, you're 40 oh shoot i thought you're like 22 no <laughs> I'm making okay. a boy. Hey, you know what? You got to give yourself a break. Okay? But taking your emotions, uh the reason why people are inconsistent with fascial maneuvers is because they somehow know that the emotions coming up, they 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 want to live in the misery or the grief or they or they know they're not ready to release the emotions that are coming up. It's not a physical thing. Okay. Okay. Just pick one Just pick also, one one maneuver. Pick up one maneuver and do it every day. Okay. Yeah, I'm doing this uh, so as release and um, belly button talk. You Instagram know. Handle too. Excuse me. You need to change, change the name of your Instagram handle. That's an old story. <laughs> Please don't give up. You got to change it. It's got to be. It's got to be. I don't need your help anymore. Or I'm good. Or or something else but change the name of your instagram handle are you suggest me something you know i'll, I'll change it instantly anything other than the one that you have <laughs> change it change it to uh pisces 19 degree pisces who anything but but it's how you project yourself you got all this mastery in your chart and that's coming to reckoning right now and you're being forced to stop your intuition is being challenged and your st- and what you stop and start what you believe in what you get into and what you get out of is being challenged right now and how do i for- know you know that this is my intuition that is popping out you know because due to this trauma or what whatsoever you know like um, it's stuck deep inside you know i can't uh, i don't know how to follow it you know but i'm sending telepathic messages you know to lisa or you know like people around me yeah yeah it's Don't worry, you won't have to figure it out. You just you'll you'll know it'll happen for you at the last minute. So in the next 9 months or so, you'll get a really good handle of this. Don't worry about it. You're being guided. And uh can you I mean like suggest me, you know, like why what is like this my I mean like what is this chart suggesting, you know? I mean like I like to help others. but how can i help others you know when the chart is just suggesting that you're going through all these these things in your life so you can help others so so take notes yeah don't <laughs> fear what you're going through just take notes know that you're going through it so that you can have experience because knowledge is not going to help people in the future experience will and i used to get this brain fog and i'm drained you know and i used to i mean like um, so get to greet people you know at times you know i mean like i don't know if i am focusing on comments then i am like so into it that i can't hear you know what you are saying you know i mean like i don't know why can't i do this multitasking and all you know is it due to brain fog or whatsoever i don't yeah, know yeah you're don't worry about it keep doing it get a maneuver every day make sure you get some minerals in your body get the dietitian earth irish sea moss or india we can give you supplements you can get off amazon in india so send us a message in the dm say can you give me supplement recommendations in india just make sure you're getting the minerals and the supplements do one fascial maneuver a day everything's going to work it out okay and this de was like um, it uh, it um, i mean like a squeeze squeezed you know juice out of me you know this de dietamic well, cert no so i was like having the fluid but it'll replace the positive one the first thing it does is it cleans out all the dysfunctional fluid in your body 
so i was having horse tail you know like you recommended yeah. so should i uh, have horse tail only or should i uh, switch to this de try to go to de cuz you're going to need you're going to need the diatoms to clean out your small intestines you know and you could take de a little bit and horse tail uh, you could take the two of them together okay so you can take a I'm little bit of DE, like one teaspoon of de and then take then regularly take horse tail that that'll help you but the de has diatoms which literally exfoliate your small intestine so it's really powerful for cleaning you up okay and also um like you know you know like um i attempted two times you know like attempted what i am a suicide survivor i attempted two times you know oh yeah so the thing is you know i mean like i'm not doing anything harmful i mean like now i mean like ever since i started this fms you know i am having bit positivity in my brain but still you know i used to get wobbly you know at times you know when things are not working out or something you know okay, so just, you know, just just keep your body clear okay your body it, your thoughts are a collection of of problems or dysfunctions or functions in your body So you're already doing all the right stuff. Don't worry about it. You're not a survivor of anything. You're you're just a human being living your life. So forget about the past. Change the narrative. Change the narrative, and just move forward. You're already doing it. <laughs> Thanks to you, you know, for changing, being angel. It starts with changing your Instagram handle. You can't <laughs> you can't keep looking at the same things and and speaking the same language and expect things to change. Yeah yeah I'll definitely change it you know right away and uh, I'm really grateful to you you know for being a ray of hope in my healing journey and guiding me through the process and I can't thank you enough already you know I'm like really grateful to you all Okay we'll talk soon okay So sure. thank you so much Okay I can't wait for you to watch the uh replay and then uh, take a video of you doing the maneuver on the rock <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, I definitely watched it. Okay. Yeah, so she, she's been trying to get up for a while, had some problems with her internet for quite some time. <clears throat> yeah, she is cute, isn't she? Yeah, she's been trying to and I I like you got to change that handle every time I see it. Just please don't give up. I'm like, what am I giving up? <laughs> Alexandra. Hi. Hi. I'm taking some diatomaceous earth. Sound very quiet. And I have to get my earphones. Oh yeah. Are you in uh are you in Chile or are you in at the hotel? So is that is that hotel only working oh. certain months of the year? Someone just said, "Oh yeah, we're closed." Someone just said, "Gary, can you share more about your teeth wow what a coincidence that i'm here yeah yeah we're having this journey together <laughs> i'm um taking some diatomaceous earth and i receive us actually right now so that's well, funny you know there's a there's a drug i told you in japan that actually uh, that actually they're using now it's approved in the united states for use that regrows your teeth and and i'm like well, okay if you got a drug that does it that means you have a natural source that does it if you have a drug and a natural source that does it that means your body can do it by itself Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I, I I feel like my my uh canines are re going to regrow because I'm letting them just go out like a kid. I'm not going to yank them out. I'm not going to cause trauma on the way out. I'm just going to let them come out naturally. Mm. But it's my canines. It's so interesting you say that. Like today I, I had this feeling that they're like my teeth are about to heal. And I keep having that feeling. Um but then the last couple of days I was thinking Exactly what you were saying. Okay, I surrender. Like if my teeth are like I have all of my teeth. They just have uh like some cavities and then I have a hole in the back. Yeah. And I was thinking, okay, if they're meant to come out, they come out. If I'm meant to have them, I'm meant to have them. And just trying to make peace with it because what I'm holding on to is a lot of fear. Yeah. About it, which is coming out trauma. Of me, but, but that was the fear and trauma. Like for me it was social acceptance. You know, it's funny because mm -hmm. You go to third world countries the first thing that they do when they make money like in Panama or Central America the the people with the first thing they do even if they're adults they're like 40 years old they go do their teeth. Mm. 
and because yeah. it, you know it's seen as a sign of status right and mm. and i'm like but how do my teeth really affect i mean whether they look good or not how do they really affect the way that i i show up in the world they don't they don't change anything they don't change my personality but but there's a lot of social fear and belief and stigma around around how how my teeth look and to the point where people put in plastic in their mouth they they grind them down they put in plastic mouth and i'm like how can yeah. that be good you know or porcelain or whatever how can it, like really how can it be good for us to do mm. that because they're they're supposed to breathe so even if i cap yeah. them they're supposed to breathe they're not breathing that's essentially going to an organ mm. yeah i've been thinking exactly that actually yeah so i so i, I did the research on that drug that regrows the teeth and works phenomenal and i'm like okay okay well so now i'm trying to figure out where the natural source is i'm just because i'm curious i'm curious what it is it's leading me to something and once mm. i find the natural source then there'll be some way to resonate with it in frequency mm. yeah it's exactly what you said it's your perception when you see that it's possible you start to believe a little bit more a little bit more yeah yeah mm. yeah it, it, I don't know if the Wi-Fi will allow me, but since we were talking about the hotel, I just wanted to show you. I don't know if you'll be able to see the garden. Oh, wow. Beautiful. It's very uh, sunny cloudy oh, today. We have seven, twelve. Well, well, yeah, so it, it's it, small. It, it'll, it'll seep like 20 people kind of thing? Or? Um, 25 and probably like 30 at its absolute max because there's also a house that's here. actually pretty, a pretty good that's actually our size okay that's cool so whereabouts is it in chile what's the name of the hotel first of all it's hosteria de la colina which is like a little hotel on the hill yeah i remember you and said, a link for it right yeah Sometimes. it's in the, the south you have to put, um, it, put it in the chat to the name okay too. my mom actually wants to sell it Oh, my mom just... Yeah, put it in the name of the chat and then people go check it out. It's really beautiful. How far are you from, where, where, where is it located in Chile? It's the southern tip, right? Actually, it's about seven hours south of Santiago and it's in a little town called Via Rica, near Pugan for anyone who knows Chile. Yeah. And you got, you're close to the ocean, right? Actually, I'm not close to the ocean anymore. We were staying in Papudo, which is no, but I mean, like... that lake out there. I see. Oh or... yeah, yeah. So we're close to Lago Viarica, which is the lake. My phone's old. Oh, it's not working. Okay. Yeah, I see. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, it's. Um... There. What's the temperature like? It's cold right now. It's unseasonably cold. It's um, what is it right now? Like forty-five, fifty, maybe a little warmer than that. It was in the thirties when I first got here, and I was like, "It's almost summer. What's going on?" Like, <laughs> I'm ready for spring. <laughs> I'm ready for summer. Yeah, because it's summer there coming right now, right? Mm, yeah, we're about to go because we're opposite because we're in the southern hemisphere. Right, right, right. That's interesting. So um. Yeah. So, um, how, so for me, my teeth back to the teeth thing, mm. it was yeah. for me, it was the, uh, when I first, what happened was is my right canine started to go, it chipped and then it went, started to go dark and there's nothing I could yeah. do. I'm not going to mm. put bleach in my mouth. There's no way about mm. that. I'm not going to laser it. There's no way around that. Um, so nothing, nothing normal would take care of it. Nothing would. And, and then I was having, this is as the pandemic was going out and I was going out for my first time to do some media. And I had this, I had this bizarre, all this fear come up, almost shaking because, mm -hmm. because I'm going to be in front of people. Will they accept me? I'm we're talking about the body and health and all this. And here it is. I got a tooth that doesn't look that way. And am I okay? Will people still accept me? Holy crap, man. It was like, there was a couple of times I was like, really shaking in bed i was like laying in bed shaking and i and i'm like wow mm -hmm. that's a lot of fear coming yeah. out of me i mean the yeah. truth was a way to get it out i know that but mm -hmm. that was deep fear and it's like am i okay am i accepted will people still believe me mm -hmm. if i don't have a proper tooth <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I, I think there's a lot of connection between fear and teeth. I find a lot of people when they speak about teeth or dentistry in general, the message is very fear based. Go to the doc, go to the dentist now. It's an emergency. You could have a brain infection. It's always the worst case scenario. And I like to question that. Why? Why do we have this fear underneath? And, and maybe it's as you talk about, it's getting access to that fear that we've yeah, been that's what holding on to. Because otherwise, I mean, it's a deep, deep intrinsic fear and it's still there because I don't fear too much of this world. And, and today I don't fear it at all. Um, today it's more about, uh, you know, I, I use a mastic gum. It protects it from getting, from getting more, more food in it or something like that. And, and I don't have to answer questions to everybody because I hate answering questions. I hate <laughs> saying the same thing over a hundred times. Mm. I mean, it's so weird. Mm. It's like, people are like, are you okay? Mm. <laughs> and, mm. and that was, that's the other part of it. I don't want to talk to people about it. I don't, I don't want their input. I don't want them yeah. to come up to me and, and ask about it all the time. Because, I mean, I, 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 I'm doing what I should be doing. I'm letting my body handle it. And from a scientific point of view, I'll never know the truth unless I just wait this out. If I go do something about it, I won't know. Will the body actually fix it? There's no pain. There's no danger. So why would I change it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think this is such an important conversation because there's not... I have found some information about teeth healing naturally, but there's not so much information. And I think all of that's about to change. It's, it's changing really, really quick. It, it, it's a relevant topic. I find that what I'm going through in my body and my life is then what everybody's going through here shortly. Yeah. So I'm, just, I'm just punching through a wall first because I'm, I'm seeing in our own community, Cynthia, Jason, um, other people, I'm not going to use all their names, but that that are in our community they all started having some sort of weird issue in their mouth that's not explainable mm. and 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 all different but all to do with the mouth mm. interesting yeah it's, um, it's like like we speak all our shit out of here so i mean i was thinking it's maybe like, communication yeah mm. and you said something in a message you sent to me you, you mentioned it it was about you know uh about inner disgust or uh with and and i get that i mean because it's it's not even from i know it's not even from this life i can mm. feel it coming from other places like i feel that that there's multiple versions why well, i actually went out and found all my doppelgangers all my 29 degrees so i know there's other versions of me out there i can see it i talk to them on a daily basis sometimes I feel like I'm just getting it out first because as I go through a transition, I can see some of the other people that are like 29 degree sages that I hang with. I see them going through it right after I am, even if they don't know I'm going through it. Mm. Yeah, because you said that you're all connected, so you all go through similar things. I think of it like the, this is weird, but like the Harry Potter thing where they all got separated into seven parts. <laughs> like yeah. the Hawk Rock. Well, that's actually... Something like I, that. That's why I see the human experience. I, you know, like mm. where there's a tree, there's a branch, there's leaves, and we're just, I'm just one of the leaves on that branch. Mm. Yeah. And yeah. And back to the inner disgust, I, I felt this intuition in the last couple of days because I've had this um, like jaw shaking. Like I've been pressing pressure points for my teeth. Like I even feel a bit of a pain in my jaw today. And I feel it's coming up, but saying, okay, I'm ready. I'm ready to process. And the message I was getting is, um, for me anyways, like a deep inner child wound yeah. that I have this belief, not me as an adult, but the inner child that I'm bad. Yeah. Someone recently said to me, inner like your inner child, your children are pure. But for some reason, children get this message. Well, I know why. Children get the message that they're Where, bad. Where, and where's it's your because, Chiron? Your Chiron was what? You know, Oh shoot! I just had my chart up, and I'm not sure. Actually, I have to look it up. Maybe I'll go. I'll go look it up in my computer in the other like, room. I think it's mm. yeah. Which oh, is maybe. which is I did something wrong, or I'm wrong mm. because I did something. Mm. Yeah, and I was feeling your. It's so interesting because your teeth are white on the outside, and I've been imagining them as pearls or something like iridescent. I actually had a dream about it last night. And then on the inside, when you get this cavity, it's this inner blackness. And I think, and then it comes to the outside. 
And I think that's like this inner darkness within us that's coming out and the teeth represent that. So in my like theory or intuition is that it comes from deep shame or um, yeah, we're like I said, disgust. It, that's what we're processing, you know, and I don't even, I don't think it's all from this life because right? mm. you know, it just, there's only so much that I can be ashamed of or process and I've pretty much done it for this life. And so we're, you know when i feel something come up and i just don't i don't feel connected to the energy i just know it's there i can identify it. Mm. yeah you were saying that you feel previous generations are just parts of ourselves in a sense yeah absolutely i mean that's that's even the indigenous fault you know a belief is that they're all part of me they're you know they don't go away they're all still there even like in Mexico then and in Latin America, the day of the dead, it's really recognizing that they're still a part of us and go anywhere. Mm. So it's like, um, if I can find my doppelgangers and if I have a back issue, they have a back issue at the same time. If I go through something, they go through something. It's funny because Debbie Griffiths who's usually on here. It's like when I started leaning up and getting what looked to be muscular, I hadn't talked to her for two months and she goes, I don't understand it. I'm not doing anything. And it's like, I look muscular and I'm leaning up and I'm losing weight and my hair's changing color and I don't understand it. And I'm like, yeah, that was what's been happening to me. So we're going through the same experiences at the same time. And that's actually we're biological fluid adaptive computing systems and our DNA is antennas and we have the same energy so we're responding the same way when we respond when we tune into that frequency so if she has the same astrology as me she has the same information input she processes information the same way i do mm -hmm. you said frequencies and i had this thought all of a sudden that teeth are maybe like antennas they are. or something and maybe that's why your they teeth, put plastic in them your hair and your nails are antennas for your fascia mm -hmm. Mm, and that's why you need minerals. That's right. Oh, wow. Because okay. your, your hair and your nail, like this is literally connective tissue. That's why when your teeth, hair, and nails get better together when you start mineralizing your body. Somebody mm. said cultivate, uh, elevate. Yeah, the pearl powder. Pearl powder works great, but I'm, I'm, beyond the, I'm beyond the things that I can fix to do it. There's something happening in my body that's beyond yeah. I, I know all. I know all the tricks. I, I've done it all. And at some point I just stopped and said, okay, whatever's going to happen is going to happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm the same. I did all the things. Um, I mean, homeopathy, like now, now I'm doing diatomaceous earth, fasting. Um, what's the, what's the doctor who discovered that we need like K2 and um, from raw milk and things like that? Oh, I remember, but, Western price. Oh, yeah, Western price. Yeah. So yeah, if you're yeah, on the healing your journey, this is everything itself. Because because food is just a signaling unit. It's it's all homeopathic. I was having this, mm. this conversation. My great grandfather and my grandfather found journals, right? And they were you know talking because we we think it's always been this way, but they they were talking about eating, like every two or three days. Mm. And that was mm. normal for them. They weren't eating every day, three times, four times a day. Mm. we've been programmed yeah i think that the body intuitively knows when it needs food and when it doesn't yeah. and when you're not hungry i i feel like on shows and stuff a lot of times when people are grieving they'll be like you need to eat you need to eat but in reality when you're grieving it's a healthy time to fast your body knows what it needs and what it doesn't yeah it's just that it, your body's trying to produce hormones to heal the emotions to work with the emotions and the fastest way to get that hormone is food right now because it knows it's like a drug. Food is a drug. It's a medication. But when we overconsume our medication, it becomes a drug. And that, and as you continue to take mm -hmm. the drug, you have to eat more and more of it. So that's why if you go back years, like when I was a kid, I would I would leave the house in the morning. I'd come back at dinner time, and I didn't I I didn't, I didn't drink anything. And maybe once in a while, a little bit of whole small water, and and I didn't eat any food. But I did that almost every day. And I still grew like a weed. So in other words, we, it's all a lie. We don't need it, but we have been, we've been, we've been tricked into thinking that our, our medication is a fuel source, but it's not a fuel source. Mm -hmm. That was a 44 That's interesting. day fast for us. You know, we went on the fast. It really changed my life because 
it was clear evidence that I didn't need food for fuel. I mean, we were hiking and camping and, and I was talking about today at the retreat. I'm like, I was joking with him because like, I have 44 days. I go into it. I'm thinking by 20 days, oh, it's going to be great. I'm going to lose all this weight. And at the end of my 44 days, I was fat. I'm like, how is that possible? Emotions. Yeah. More. Yeah. More I loved emotions. what you said about how emotion is like our weight has and fat and, and just bodies in general has more to do with emotions than anything. Yeah, it does. Yeah. yeah. Emote. That we emote and what we store. Oh, someone says, um, someone said oil pooling, which I do every day, but I've been doing um, oil pooling. Urine pooling. For, yeah, urine. I've been doing urine. I've been doing oil pooling for, I don't know, 20 years. Yeah, I've been, not 20 years for me, but like three or four years every day, I mean, every I'm morning. Eight years old or something, right? Yeah, 29. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm 29. So, yeah, I've been doing oil pooling a long time. Yeah, I, I feel like I don't feel the same. I wake up, I oil pool, I tongue scrape, I take apple cider vinegar, then I do the diatomaceous earth and sea moss. Now that's the new addition to my morning routine. And I don't feel the same. Like my gut feels gloopy if I don't do that. Yeah, yeah, because you're, you're giving your body what it needs. I mean, mm. I, I, I can't describe how different I feel in my body. Like I have, I get up early. Like I, I'm at, we do our practice at 5 a.m. Uh, 5 5 30 and i'm going till like 11 o'clock at night i don't have energy issues i you know like i i can go like like the other day um i was yesterday or day before yesterday uh, yesterday i think it was i was i went from i went from 5 a.m till 4 p.m i didn't stop didn't stop talking i was on lives i was in meetings and i didn't eat and and it's just a whole new way of interacting with my body like before i would have been and at the end that last night when we went to the beach i, I was getting back because we didn't get oh i didn't go i didn't eat till seven o'clock so i'm like why why is it that i'm doing all this stuff i don't feel tired i feel like i should be worn out or tired somewhere and i'm not mm. and what do you think about that well, it's balance. It's like when the body has doesn't work as hard to adapt to the environment, you have more energy left to do stuff. So if I take away your adaption to the environment, like if you're fascist, uh, if you're dehydrated, if you're clogged up, if you're storing emotions, I've just mm. progressively been getting better and better as I clear everything out. Mm. Yeah. And when you're... Um... When you're eating and your digestive system isn't in its best state or you're not in right rest and digest, you're just taking energy away from your yeah. body. And when you're yeah, yeah. fasting, your body can use that energy more efficiently. Yeah, I was, I was talking about urine therapy the other day and people were like, because I'll put it, I'll put lime in it. Sometimes I drink it plain, but I'll put lime in it. Um, I'll also put down diatomaceous earth, Irish sea moss um, with some boric acid. So I'll put all that in a cocktail and drink it. For me, it's efficiency. I don't want to do 10 things. I want to do one. That's just who I am. So, but they said, well, that, that is going to change your pH. And I'm like, yeah, there's a misunderstanding how pH works. You get a pH in your skin. You got one in your mouth. You got one in your esophagus, one in your stomach. You got one in your small intestine and your large intestine, They're all different pH. And your body is mm -hmm. trying to manage it, but your blood pH has to stay within 0 0.02. And if it changes, you're dead. So, your body is mm. using all this energy to balance the internal pHs against your blood, so your blood stays constant. So that's why when we keep our internal flora and pH balanced, our body has more energy, just naturally. But when we go to sleep at night, um, our body works to heal itself, so, it, so it, it's producing all these hormones to heal. And that healing all those hormones the signaling for them is in the urine so that when you drink your urine in the morning you start off you all that healing work then you go back to zero and you start again causing all the issues you go back build it up and at night time it does so you don't get an advantage of it so when you drink your urine it automatically gives you those hormones back well the most the thing that dysregulates your hormones more than anything is the per, uh, or sorry your which, which your body uses all that energy. That's what it's, ba it's balancing. So when I say balancing pH by taking urine, it's because your body's not working as hard to get all those healing hormones. It's got them right away. So you basically start off where you left off. 
That's why it works. Mm. I was talking to uh, uh, Troy Casey, the certified health nut yesterday. And, I love, uh, loved that conversation. Yeah, I mean, he's 58. Look at that guy. He I looks know. Like, he, I, I mean, I mean, uh, if you gave him a, uh, if you shaved his hair a little bit and gave him like a, a flip over do or whatever, he looked like he would legitimately look like he's in his early thirties. Yes. And, and, and I'm like, oh. There's a good example of somebody who, who embodies it. That's why I want to talk to him more. It's the guy embodies mm. what he talks about. It was, it was so cool to watch. It was like, t I, I, I described it to my partner. It was like two lions, like two, I don't know if he's a grandmaster, but just two incredible people having this amazing conversation, bringing up the energy of everybody watching. Yeah, he, it's going to be fun. I'm going to have him come on. He's going to do his 28 day reset. So we're going to have him come once a week, talk about his, his what he notices because he's very, he notices a lot in his body. So I'm curious mm. to see how this works. And I want to ask all these questions about urine therapy because it's like, what about aged urine? What's the benefit? What about taking it different times of the day, saving it? Like there's all these different conversations. I don't know. And I'm not, I'm not, I don't plan on being an expert. I, I, I have, I have something that's functioning for me right now. It's 80% that's good enough. Mm. I was thinking about how when you're dehydrated, your urine tends to be darker in color and with more salt. And yeah. when you're hydrated, it's clear and more like water with like no smell. So yeah. why wouldn't yeah. it be the opposite? Yeah, because it's almost like your body's reaction. If I push against you, you push back. So the body's reactive. Now, remember, normally, like when we were fasting, we, we didn't urinate like we urinated once every three or four days. So, mm -hmm. um, so what's happening is the, the water goes into the bladder and uh, when NASA studied it, it comes out of the bladder back into the system. So what's ha happening is it's collecting what you need and giving it back. Yeah. It's almost like you would think if you were dehydrated, your body would retain all the salt. But in yeah, it's everything is a reaction so the whole human existence is a reaction to stimulus so that's just an input or a stimulus your body is meant to react that's why it's so hard to measure because we're trying to we're looking at the action but our body has a reaction to everything if i take something i react to it if i take that's why that's why something acidic causes you to be alkaline same thing mm -hmm. yeah a couple yeah. of people before asked what is oil pulling so should we tell yeah. them what that yeah, is I, yeah, I, I just use coconut oil i do, do coconut oil um they say the max amount of time is 20 minutes before you reabsorb so i do 18 minutes that way i have like two minutes to go and then you spit it out in the trash can so it doesn't mess up your drain you can add like oh, how do you feel about um essential oils in the mouth because i hear like a lot uh, well, of controversy yeah, in that. You, i mean you gotta watch what you're putting in that's a pretty heavy it's you're getting a lot like Essential oils are way more powerful than, than people think they are. And they have, mm. have terpenes in them. So pick your oil mm. wisely. <laughs> That's all I say. If I do an oil, I usually do like a drop of oregano oil, which is not an essential oil. It's just oregano yeah. oil. Oregano or oil. I do clove. Yeah, I mean. And then I always uh, do like a probiotic. Like I do a diluted apple cider vinegar or something to rebalance because I think the the oil microbiome is under underlooked at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Um, and then hydroxy yeah, You're doing everything space. right. I mean, it's you're doing yeah. everything right. You can you can ingestible or or or, uh, or diffused or vaped oils too. They all have an input, but in the mouth, it's the same. Look at whether you put it in your mouth, you put it on your skin, you breathe yes. it. At the end of it, it's all just different potencies of the same thing. Mm. That's why yeah. li li living oh, yeah. around pollution, we are polluted. Mm -hmm. Like when you breathe something in, it takes, I think, 13 seconds to go or 30 seconds to go into the bloodstream. When you put it on your skin, it's 13 seconds to go in the bloodstream. And yeah. when you swallow it or ingest it, it's like three seconds, I yeah. think. Yeah. So whenever I go to the grocery store, I'm like, I plug my nose around all the laundry detergent. Well, that's why I tell people, <laughs> like, no, don't I put don't it in your skin it. if you wouldn't eat it. Right? Mm -hmm. And when I say mm -hmm. don't put oh, it in yeah. your skin if you wouldn't eat it, it changes the way that people think about skincare products. Mm -hmm.
Yeah, I only use like coconut oil and apple cider vinegar on my face now. Yeah, that's cool. Um, also, somebody said um, they use nano hydroxyapatite to. People who have liked. You're cutting out. Yeah, let me see if it's the Wi-Fi. I'm gonna go closer to the source. Yeah, no, what was it? Am I still there, or is it? Oh, yeah, that's better. Okay, I'm I'm going to the router. <laughs> it's Southern Chile life. <laughs> So someone was saying they use nano hydroxyapatite toothpaste, which I haven't used that nano one, and that they um, actually were able to rebuild a chipped tooth, which I just think is cool. Yeah, and I mean, Cynthia people. has. She's re rebuilt a chipped tooth, mm. you know, and that's why I know that they can grow. It's just the mystery as to why they don't. And th yeah. that's what I'm figuring out. Like if I was to go, I was saying this to a, a dentist um, was in our group the other day. I said, look at if I, if, so, if I was to pull this out, and pull the root with it and all that then how would i know like kids it, when it's ready to come out it comes out so let's just leave it like a kid until it's ready to come out yeah yeah and i also think it goes back to individual intuition for the individual about what's right for you i don't think there's one right path for every single person nano implies nanobots no nano just means small isn't it <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's I, just I, teeny tiny. Yeah, nano is just teeny tiny. It could it's be like nano, nano silver, but nano particles are still. I haven't tried the nano hydroxyapatite. I know there's like controversy about it. I've just done the regular hydroxyapatite. Yeah, I, I'm not even. Don't even have. I don't even have a. <laughs> like, That's okay. There's there's just too many stuff today. Like people ask me all the time, like what are all the things, all the tips? Like here's all my tips. Uh, hydrate your body, get the inflammation down, move it, manage your emotions. That's it. That's my tip. Yeah. I also think that it goes directly back to emotions. It, it's all like emotions. It's all yeah. emotions. Yeah, it's if a I, lesson. Yeah, I can do everything right, but if I'm in fear, my body is going to produce adrenaline, norepinephrine, and cortisol. That means I'm not going to digest right. I'm not going to process right. I'm not going to eliminate right. My pH is going to be off. Uh, my body's going to tighten uh, when it shouldn't. Uh, I won't process glycine or build protein protein folding issues will happen so if i'm in fear it doesn't matter what i do and that's that's where i see a lot of people right now are, have all the knowledge and they're doing all the right things and they're still not feeling the way they want to feel in their body mm. yeah and it and it's a little bit of like for me it's perfectionism too because as you're saying it's you're doing all the right things but is it that you need to be doing all the right things or is it there's an underlying cause or a lesson that you're meant to yeah. go through yeah and that that was it i mean human garage was we were fixing people that no one else could fix they were coming from all kinds of medicines all kinds of practices in the clinic and i noticed that when i would take away their pain the lesson that was commensurate with the pain would be also taken away so then uh, two years later they would come back with a bigger issue and i'd take it away again and then two years later they come back well you know once or twice or 10 or 100 people you might go oh that's just bad luck you know, in the thousands of people and tracking it, and it's like, oh, there's not a bad luck anymore. I'm the only common denominator. I'm the practitioner removing the pain. So they didn't get the lesson. Mm. Yeah, I've heard you say that in the a couple of lives before, and that really struck me. As a healer even, or as anybody that wants to help people heal, it's like you, you have to not take away Away the problem from the person you just guide them through their own journey yeah i think we had i think we had some video of it when i put it up but i just did a session with lisa and because she was asking again and i like oh i love her yeah and i I'm, I'm i'm like i i did a session with her in front of everybody here in front of 50 people and i'm like i'm not going to touch you because <laughs> i because you you keep coming back to wanting this physical body but after mm -hmm. we got the narratives and the emotions and worked out and all this she went from a eight or nine pain down to uh one pain and i'm like wow yeah it's because it at the end of it it's what we think about it how we tell our story and how we emote about it 
Oh, I love that you brought up pain because I've been wanting to answer a comment here. What do you do if your tooth is experiencing extreme pain? And I love this question and I really want to answer it. Um, because I think so many people think you have to jump to the dentist or a painkiller. And from my experience, I experienced a lot of extreme pain. Or I wouldn't say extreme pain, but um, when I did have extreme pain, I went to the dentist. So I learned to do something different. And the two things I would say is, A, you can always use a homeopathy if you want it, if you just need a quick relief. And I learned all the things for quick relief for pain. It was like clove oil, homeopathy. Um, there's like a gajillion out there. And yeah. So even CBD helped me, um, pressure points, you know, all the things. Rinsing with salt water. I looked up all the things. But then at one point I was like, you know what? I don't want to take away this pain. I, I know how to take away the pain, but I what is the pain telling me? And the first time I had my tooth cracked, I had already had two dental procedures. The two dentists I went to after that told me I had to pull the tooth. Everything in my intuition said, no. I'm not going to pull this tooth. I'm not going to go the, I had a root canal on the other side. I'm not going that route this time. So what it was telling me this time, the message was, I need to listen to what is the pain telling me? And, and before I was able to do that, I had to process the fear. I had to separate between when the fear came up, I had to say, is the tooth the problem or the fear the problem? And address the fear first. And once the fear went away, suddenly the tooth problem was less extreme or urgent. Yeah. Yeah. yeah by yeah, the fear of pain uh, doubles the pain. Yeah. 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 It was the fear and I had to go in and process. And I met a girl, actually, she was on your live like a few months ago, a woman, she's amazing. And I did Reiki with her a few times. And she told me, you're res resisting feeling the fear because you don't think that you're capable and just feel it. And now when I have the fear come up, I ground, I use all my tools and my resources. I come back in my body, but then I just feel it because it's, it's asking to come up. And sometimes the fear of the fear is worse than the fear. It is. It is. The pain, it's like when the pain of staying the same is greater than the pain of change, we change. So fear mm -hmm. is our body trying to communicate with us. And yeah. so like if I'm in pain here and I touch it, if you're inflicting pain on me and I touch, put my hand there, that pain drops by 50% right on the touch. Because my, my, my brain and my body, my consciousness knows I'm acknowledging it. Mm. So just yeah. acknowledging pain. Yeah, just, just acknowledging it. Yes, yes, I, I completely agree. And it's like there's a message. Your body is trying to tell you something and it'll start with something small. It'll start with like a little thing and then you'll ignore it or you'll give a painkiller or, or whatever. You, you suppress it and then the body will get louder and louder and louder and it will say, listen to me, hear me, I'm trying to tell you something. And, and until you listen to it, and then when you do listen to it, it goes, oh, okay, so now I'm satisfied, thank you. <laughs> Somebody asked us, could the teeth react to diet change? Absolutely, but it's diet. Listen, there are, there are vegans who have healthy teeth and muscles. Look at Wade Lightheart, mm -hmm. just won Mr. North America as a, as a plant-based bodybuilder. Mm -hmm. Massive muscle mm -hmm. on, that, on that kid. And then and there, and there's vegans who are, uh, uh, there's vegans who are unhealthy, there's carnivorous people that are unhealthy and then those that are healthy. I have found that the most, um, sta uh, most effective way to measure the health of somebody is to watch their, their words and their emotional reactions to the situation. Over time, that tells me more about it because I can do everything right again, but if I'm in fear, I'm anger or I'm depressed when I eat and eat food, I'm, not, I'm, I'm, I'm hitting the wrong save button. So, mm -hmm. and I had a clinical study internal and um, because I had a woman that by all measures in the re regular world should have been unhealthy. And her tests were, every one of her tests from blood to subclinical was all perfect. And I couldn't figure it out why. And the only thing I could attribute it towards is she was happy. And I got to know her. I watched her in community from afar in the Kabbalah Center. I watched her for like five years, six years, I think. And, and she was, you know, like not fake happy. She was legitimately happy. She should have a horrible test, but she was the happiest person I've ever met. Mm -hmm. And then, then I had other people and I, I brought in the studies, but I would literally test them every three or four months because I wanted to understand. They weren't. Do you think she was happy because she was processing through her emotions regularly, not yeah. suppressing them? Yeah, 
she was, Feeling everything. She was a generally happy person. But irrespective of why she was happy, her state of being was happy. Mm. And with that state of being being happiness, then by default, um, by de by default that she's happy, she like if I'm happy, I'm producing the right hormones. So when I do eat, I'm doing. But if I'm angry or sad or fearful, I eat. Now I'm actually hitting the wrong buttons in my hormones. Mm. I'm saving the wrong information. It it, it it's a weird one. Yeah. We're, we're at we're at twelve. Then I've I've actually got to go. Uh, That's okay. I to go to. I mean, I love talking to you. It's such a fantastic. I'm literally time. like shaking because I feel so much energy releasing of just how powerful the conversation is, and and I love reading all the comments too, like of just how important the conversation is. I yes. appreciate it so well, much. Conversation, and you're you're a master in your own right. So you're a 28 degree Cancer, which means that this lifetime you're here to get that last piece, which is you're going to figure out the mastery of caregiving, of helping, of, of being detailed and feeling stuff. So. Awesome. Thank you. I look forward to talking again. Enjoy Costa Rica. Take care. Bye. Bye. Okay, everybody. That was fantastic. Such a good set of conversations. We didn't have CO Tuesdays today, but we had a lot of other stuff that was great. Um, I'll walk around here a little bit as I walk toward the end here. I'm going to get my stand. I sat down the whole time today. I don't know why. Because normally I stand. So, so just a couple things. Uh, the 16th of December, we are in Vancouver. Um, we've got a limitation on tickets now. I thought we could do more, but we're limiting at 500. So make sure you go and if you're interested, go get your tickets now. Children under 17 are free of charge. This is the pool area that we're going to. So make sure you get that. Check out our event section. Also, please go to our YouTube and subscribe. And please, anybody else you know that's going there, get them to subscribe. Appreciate that. And uh, check out our new website. There's some cool stuff on there. Hey, everybody. Here we go. Look at this. We got everybody over here on the Nano V. On the Nano V. How's the Nano V going? It's great. I, I uh, focused on the field for a little bit outside the forest. And it's starting to, I think it's starting to help me out a lot. It is helping, yeah. Hey, everybody. See you. There's, hey, what, what do you get when you, what do you get when I look at you? I'm, so her name's Amira. So when I look at Amira, what do I see? Myself. Thanks, Amira. And 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 for those guys who haven't got enough viewpoint, this is Mary Mary quite contrary. That's all 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 of the Instagram, all the stories. That's Mary. Okay, guys. See you later. Have a good one. Bye.